don't judge each day by the harvest you reap. Don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seed you sow. Because when we sow, we will surely reap. Don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seed you sow. Secondly, there's a big difference between getting and reaping. There's a big difference between getting and reaping. A lot of people think they have this all figured out that I give, I get back. And we've used that terminology at times, but it's not the same as, as reaping. Because when a farmer sows seed, he just doesn't stop there. There's a lot of work he has to do to bring the harvest in. And so some of, the, some of the work that we have to do is praise God and thank God that he's got it already taken care of, that's happening, and so forth, and keep our hearts in praise and adoration to him. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. I love when you go back to the original language of what it says here. If you will diligently listen to the voice of your God and do what he says. If you will diligently listen to the voice of your God and do what he says. And so I encourage you today that during this service you listen to him the voice of the Holy Spirit to speak to you as to what he wants you to do. Listen to him and do what he wants you to do. And lastly, receiving God's blessing. It's not about us. It's about honoring him. Let me say that again. Receiving God's blessing is not about us. It's about honoring him. Now, before I talk to you about first fruits this morning, I want to talk to you about an alarming, devastating disease. If it's not checked quickly, paralysis will set in. It's called cirrhosis of the giver. Come on, if you're going to clap, don't Mickey Mouse. Come on, give God a clap offer and praise the Lord. <laughs> Cirrhosis of the giver sets in at offering time, or at the very mention of giving. And this particular disease keeps you from getting your wallet out of your pocket or your purse. But it's absolutely amazing that the healing comes as soon as lunchtime comes after the service. This disease will seriously affect the work of the kingdom and the local church, and you can miss out on tremendous blessings of God. You need to have ease, not disease. And you can be healed by fulfilling your responsibility by giving to the kingdom and to the work of this fellowship. I came across a marvelous statement recently. What I have in God is greater than what I don't have in the world. Stop and think about that. What I have in God is greater than what I don't have in the world. You hear people complain, I don't have this, I don't have this, but I, what I've got in God is greater than what I don't have in this world, praise God, because he's always there. I want you to think about the things that you own, the house you have, the car you drive, the money you saved. Picture all your stuff and then think of two biblical truths. All that stuff isn't yours. Ask any funeral director. No one takes anything with him. When John D. Rockefeller died, his account was asked, how much did John D. leave? And the accountant replied, all of it. All that stuff is not yours. And secondly, all, this, all that stuff is not you. Who you are has nothing to do with the clothes you wear or the car you drive. Amen. Jesus said, life is not defined by what you have even when you have a lot. 
Heaven doesn't know you as the guy with the nice suit or the woman with the big house or the kid with the new bike. Heaven knows your heart. When God thinks of you, I hope he sees your compassion, your devotion, your tenderness, and your generosity. I want you to realize that First Fruits is a golden opportunity for you to seize and grab a hold of a God moment. Wow. I believe today that some of you are going to grab of a goal of a God moment that will literally change your life. Because God come moments come like this. Sometimes they go like that. We need to be prepared this morning to reach out and grab a hold of a God moment. Because God moments are going to hit all over this auditorium this morning. First Fruits is a platform in which your faith can grow. You have a prosperous and successful year as well as a prosperous and successful, successful life. We must live and act in faith. If you want to change anything in your life, you have to operate in faith. Oh, well, you missed a good time to say amen. Amen. Jesus says in Matthew, according to your faith, it will be done to you. What a simple but powerful statement. Be it unto you according to your faith. That means we tend to get out of life what we expect. What are you expecting? What are you expecting in 2014? Amongst a number of things, expect that your first fruits will determine your promotion, your increase, your growth, your expansion, and the rate of your enlargement. I kept thinking about these words last year. I did mention this as well. Uh, promotion, increase, growth, expansion, and enlargement. And the more I thought about these words, I thought about Jabez. Jabez was one who called on God and, and said, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you'd keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. I want us to pray for a minute. Lord, we thank you that you want to bless those who desire a life that prospers with you in your fullness. Oh, that you would bless us. Thank you that you're ready to fulfill a people with a vision for life that expands beyond the status quo. Lord, enlarge our territory. Thank you, Lord, that you're ready to empower everyone here who would invite your works and resources of power, that your hand would be with us. Grant us, Lord, the heart and the eyes to receive all that you want to show us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what I want us to do is think of the literal meaning of, of first fruits. The first fruits is the portion of the harvest that's given to God. And most, most notably, first fruits are the first to come. Or it's a promise to come. And it's a pledge and a hope and a greater harvest to be manifested in our lives. And first fruits, when we present our first fruits offering today, as I said, it's not about us as much as it's about him. And first fruits is specially dedicated to God. It's to bring honor to him. It's an act of worship. And there's the spiritual meaning. Giving God the first fruits, we acknowledge that all good things come from Him and everything belongs to Him. It's all His. And giving the first fruits is a way of expressing trust in God's provision. Just as He provided the first fruits, so He will provide the rest of the harvest. They went out when the first fruits were coming in, and they took a sheaf of the first fruits, they waved that before God, and they believed that God would protect their harvest from the thief, the, uh, the fire, and the bug. And they believe the full harvest to be manifested. You and I need to operate in the same way as we give our first fruits offering that we believe God's going to bring in the full harvest that he has for us in this next 12 months. How many are believing God for the full harvest that he has? Come on, how many are believing God? Amen. Praise God. We're believing God to bring that harvest in. 
They went out in, the, out in the field and took the sheaf of the first and presented it to the Lord because that sheaf was considered sanctified and holy by God. It was a guarantee or promise of the harvest to come. It guaranteed that harvest. And everything we should do, we should always present our first fruits offering to the, uh, to the Lord because when you understand the concept of first fruits, you will desire to give God the best out of what God has given you. Here's the deal. The book of Numbers gives three optional times in the Old Testament days that no matter where you lived in Israel, you're commanded to go up to the temple and bring in your thanksgiving offering to the Lord. It may have been expressing thanksgiving for a bountiful harvest, which was most often the case, thanking him for the gain and the crops that he's blessed you with. Remember, they presented a sheaf of the first fruit to protect their harvest. And we need to protect our harvest, and we need to realize that harvest should not be limited to financial blessing only. Loved ones will be saved this year because of first fruits offering. The sick will be healed. The sick will be healed because of first fruits offering. Reconciliation will take place in homes and families and marriages because of first fruits offering. There'll break, be breakthrough in the lives of many people here today because of a first fruits offering. There will be miracles manifested. How many want to catch a miracle today? There will be miracles manifested. Therefore, when you give your first fruits offering to the work of the kingdom in faith, you shall surely receive, excuse me, you shall surely receive a reward for God will provide your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. How many like that passage of scripture? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Wonderful scripture. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory. We're standing on that scripture. What does it mean? If you read the entire context, when you are offering in generosity, all your needs will be met. There's an if required. If we study the scriptures and really make a study of first fruits, we clearly see the intention of God in instituting, the, instituting this ordinance. First, it's to honor him as the maker and giver of all wealth. That's the first reason. Second, it's to praise, to create an atmosphere of praise and worship in his presence. This is about us coming today and praising and worshiping our God because of our God and how great he is. In effect, giving of first fruits is a biblical injunction. But we need to answer two critical questions. What is first fruits and what constitutes the first fruits? Two different questions. The answer to the first part of the question, what is first fruits? We need to look at Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord. Listen to it. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow. Now we know what it's talking about when we want our barns filled with plenty. It means that God wants to pile it up in heaps. God wants to pour so much abundance and blessing into your life that he wants to pile it up in heaps. How many want heaps piled up for them? Get a picture of God piling it up in heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps. That's what God wants to, wants to do and wants to accomplish. And secondly, he fills your vats with new wine. He wants a greater anointing to operate in our lives. 
I, I, I curiously have to ask this question. How many are involved in soul winning? How many want a richer, deeper anointing when you're soul winning? Raise your hand. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we claim a richer, deeper anointing for those that go out and win souls. God, just at the opening of their voices, people respond and accept the Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for the great work that you're doing in this house of seeing people saved. Just pour that anointing on freshly, freshly, freshly. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. To answer the first question, sometimes I think in church we shouldn't give all the answers. Sometimes I think we should just give, leave you with questions. Things that you've got to go and think about. So you just don't, we just don't walk out of church on Sunday, or well, I heard a message and somebody found out something I should do, but what is the question? What am I supposed to deal with? What am I supposed to find an answer to this week? So what is the first fruits? It's best described as the initial gain or profit you deprive from every activity that increases you. Every activity that increases you desires, deserves a first fruits. Exodus 23, verse 16 and 19 reads, In the first of the harvest, the first fruits of thy labors which you have sown in the field, and the first of the first fruits of the land you shall bring to the house of the Lord. We bring our first fruits to the house of the Lord in order that we can worship him. Exodus 34, 26 reads, the first of the first fruits. And then Leviticus 23 speaks to the children of Israel and says to them, when you come into the land which I give you and you reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheep of the first fruit of your harvest to the priest. So the sheep is a part that was representative of the whole. And I really, to simplify this, the, the, the thing to understand is, is they went out in the field when the first sheep was coming up. They came and waved that before the Lord. And that was to guarantee the harvest for them, protect the harvest for them. You and I are doing exactly, doing exactly the same thing as we present a first fruits offering so the harvest is perfect, protected for us. Now, looking at the scriptures we've looked at in, in conjunction with Proverbs 3, 9, and 10, we can reach some conclusion. The scripture refers to the first of the first fruits, or the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest, not all of it. God does not expect us to give the whole harvest. God doesn't expect us to give it all. What God expects us to give is the best. The best of the first fruits, the best that we can do. The sheep of the first fruits to be the best that we can give. Now, I, I know that some of you have not heard this before, first fruits. And no one can tell you what to do when it comes to giving a first fruits offering. But if it's new to you, your faith may be at a level that your first fruits offering may amount to a week's salary. Maybe you're a little bit more along in your faith and it could be a month's salary. Some of you are far, far beyond that and are doing far greater than that. Your faith has grown to a much higher level. How many of you know God wants our faith to grow? How many know God wants our giving to grow? See, God says in his word that you've grown in faith, you've grown in love, you've grown in this, you've grown in that, you've grown in all these things. Grow in the gift of giving as well. So it's something that we grow in, in, a, in on an annual basis. So your faith should grow much higher. You determine what is the first or the best and act according to your faith. Faith comes how? Faith comes how? And hearing by a word from God. As I said, this is a walk of faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. Now I want you to know that this message, this time today has been bathed in prayer. 
that God will accomplish great things in each of our lives and in this house. Some of you will receive a major breakthrough today that will change your life. Some of you will get major revelation today that will alter your life. Some of you will get a miracle today. Psalm 37, verse 3 says in one translation, Trust in the Lord and you will be nourished by faith. Trust in the Lord and you will be nourished by faith. See, when you trust and I trust in the Lord, we can have complete faith that our needs will be met. That we will see what God has promised us in his word. We will see the full harvest. But here is, here is, the, here is the thrilling part. Your faith will grow stronger and stronger. Every year as you step out in first fruits and give a first fruits offering and you see the hand of God move as he says he will, your faith will go stronger and stronger and stronger. I had a man come to me in, in our congregation at the end of 1912 and he said to me, uh, uh, Pastor, I'm, uh, you know, I retired this year and uh, we've, we've given and God's blessed and but next year, there just isn't going to be the finances for us to give. And I said, brother, you've sown enough seed for the miracle to take place. And he said, well, we'll just, just have to see what God does. Well, we're not a wealthy church by any stretch of the nation, but we're very, very faithful people. And he gave us first fruits beginning of 2013. He gave months' salary. Uh, and he turned around by the end of the year and he gave $33,000 in an offering. He said to me a week ago, Pastor, I don't know what's going to happen this week or this year. And I says, well, it'll be coming again because of the seed you sowed. Your faith increases. It increases and increases. Your faith is nourished as you stand and operate on the word of God. Psalm 37, verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and you will be nourished by faith. But when you trust in the Lord, you can have complete faith that your needs will be met, that you'll see the full harvest. But here's the thrilling part of it. They said faith will go stronger and stronger. The verse begins with trust and faith. It requires both faith and trust. Faith is a simple intellectual concept, a belief that God is in control. Um, Trust involves translating this lofty concept of faith into action. Verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Will you notice the conditions involved? Usually there's an if and an if involved. If you do this, I will do that. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. How do you know God is going to give you the desires of your heart? When you take delight in him, surely he will fulfill your request because he knows what you desire will be put to his service. Verse 5 says, Commit your ways to the Lord, and trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. See, the righteous man or woman knows with an absolute certainty the only road to good fortune is trust. Ends by trust in God and faith in God. It's committing your way to him. The way, the, the, excuse me, the individual that will not put faith in action, who does not put his trust in God, he will try many different roads to success, but will not be satisfied. There's nothing God loves more than keeping his promise, answering the prayers, and fulfilling his dreams. That's who he is, and that's what God does. I was preparing today for today. God showed me some awesome things. He spoke to me about our blessing him with our praise for the manifested harvest. Psalm 24 says, The earth is the Lord's in its fullness. 
I want you to shut your eyes for a moment, if you will. I want you to get a picture of it all belongs to God. I want you to get a picture of the blessing of God descending from above. And as I thought of the servant and prayed about the service, I felt that we were to take just a little bit extra time this morning. I'm going to ask everybody in this section here, by the section behind Charlie, that you join hands all across this section. And I'm just going to go just to a person on the end of an aisle. And as I touch that person, I want that person just to shout out a name in. And I want you to begin to feel and sense the blessings of God being released from heaven. It's like a funnel flowing into your life. I want you to sense your faith grow so that you can begin to believe for what God wants to do. Remember to believe for that blessing to be Amen. flowing through. Amen, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just believe in the name of Jesus. God wants to bless us in an abundant way. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord says, if you will believe that he is, and you seek after him, he will diligently reward you. Just let the blessing of God flow upon you. Now believe, believe, believe. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Believe that the financial structure in your life is never going to be the same again. This very moment, Almighty God is changing the financial structure in your home and your finances. It's changing the financial structure in this house. God, because you are going to be faithful to listen to him this morning and do what you're supposed to do in first fruits, God is going to abundantly reach out and God is going to abundantly bless you. It's the word he has for this house this morning. Abundance and blessing is coming in the mighty name of Jesus. It requires us to do our part. Come on, keep shouting amen. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Now, would everybody in the section behind where the pastor would sit right over to the far wall, would you all join hands right across the balance of the auditorium? Just right from here, look at me. Join hands somehow all the way right across. Right to the far walls over there. With the other section on where we didn't pray for yet, would you just join hands from your section all the way over? My children, I want you to hear my voice. This morning, you're going to be nourished by faith. Your faith is going to grow in leaps and bounds. My blessings are your blessings. My blessings are to be poured out in your life. Faith and believe to receive all that I have for you. Faith to believe to receive all that I have for you. Financial bondage to break. Debt to be released. Healings to come. Miracles to be manifested. Relationships to be mended. Marriages to be healed. God, we thank you for the miraculous that's being released in this house right now. We pull it from the third heaven to this very realm, Father God, for the benefit of your people, for the benefit of this house. Lord, from this day forward, we may never be the same because the power of Almighty God is going to work in our lives and accomplish what you want to accomplish. We praise you for it. We bless you for it, Lord. 
We thank you, give you all praise, all honor, all glory for what you're doing, for what you're going to do in our midst. Hallelujah. We thank you for causing a new flow of material abundance to replace that which has already been consumed. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Father God, you've had, you've had me at times reach into the third heaven to draw a part of the third heaven that needs to be replaced in a body. And there's somebody needing a body touch this morning, Father God. We just pray that as we reach into the third heaven that that body part will be manifested and placed in that person's body and they'll be totally, completely healed now, Father God, as we believe you're given first fruits. We bless you for it. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the fullness of the Lord's. The Word of God teaches that God took possession for himself, for this earth, for the very purpose of transferring the possession of us. You can look at me again. God took possession of everything on this earth so we could, for the very purpose of transferring his possession to us. And there's no contradiction between this verse, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness in Psalm 115, 16, which says, the heaven and the heavens are the Lord's, and yet the earth and all of its beauty has been given to man. It all belongs to him. Can you shout amen? amen. It all belongs to him. But listen to me, when, we're, 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 when we are willing to bless him with our praise and our offering and the gifts of first fruit, it belongs to us. There's no lack of material blessing and abundance in God's heavenly treasure. He waits for us to bless him before he renews more blessing. God desires us to bless him, to worship him as we present our first fruits this morning. So when we come, we're going to raise our first fruits offering. We're going to celebrate as we present it to God. We're going to worship him, praise God. He's going to renew more blessing. When we bless God, he causes a new flow of material abundance to replace that which has already been consumed. The earth belongs to him, but the replenishment of God's blessing depends on us. We are to praise through. You know, there's that passage of scripture that deals with the taking of Jericho. Uh, the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I've delivered Jericho into your hands. God speaks in the past tense, not the future tense. He doesn't say, I will deliver. God says, I have delivered. And the significance of this is the battle is won before it already began. God had already given them the city. They, all they had to do was take it. This is this some way how it says, stop praying about it and start praising him for it. Let's start praising God for what he's already done. We need to stop sometime asking God to do something and start praising him because he said it's already done. Hallelujah. Prayer and praise are both expressions of faith, but praise is a higher dimension of faith. Prayer is asking God to do something. Future tense praise is believing that God has already done it. It's done, praise God. Hallelujah. Let me recap. When we bring our first fruits offering, we're thanking God for what he's done in the past. We're presenting a first fruits offering in faith, believing that the part represents the whole, and because the part is sanctified, the holy the balance of the harvest is sanctified and blessed and holy. God will protect your harvest for 2014 from the fire, from the bugs, the thief, from anything that would steal it, because it's already yours, praise God. Hallelujah. In other words, we're believing God for the full harvest to be manifested. But we're going to go a step further. We're going to praise God that it's already done. In other words, when you bring your offering, your up here, your commitment for first fruits this morning, you're going to dance and celebrate up at the altar. You're going to wave hands and wave your offering before the Lord. We're going to celebrate. It's time to celebrate. It's time to celebrate, praise God, for what God has already done for us because we rejoice because he says it's a done issue. Bless God. Hallelujah. So what we want you to do is just bow your heads now for a moment and pray, pray, pray. Get the Lord's direction.
as to what constitutes your first fruit offering. So that you're giving God this morning your best. This is not a time to tip God. This is a time to hear God. This is a time to sacrifice. This is a time to give God the very best you can give. And God will bring it back. You know, the Lord started out by making a statement at the, at the, at the beginning. When we act in faith, we give first. Jesus said, don't wait to receive, start to give. Give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will men pour into your lap. But the same measure you measure it out, it will be measured back to you again. Our God is an awesome God. I've come to learn through experience and revelation that you can't outgive God. Hallelujah. So we want you to pray, husbands and wife, we want you to pray together. You need to be in agreement as to what you're doing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for a house where people are getting saved. Thank you for a house of such blessing. Thank you for a house of such leadership. Thank you, thank you for a house where we can come and our faith can grow. Thank you for the encouragement we have in the word. And Father, we thank you this morning as we give our first fruits offering that marriages will be healed, reconciliations will take place, healings will take place, the full harvest will be manifested You're for your people. We praise you, we bless you, we thank you this day. Hallelujah. Kore de siki onta bre santa rama kore yanta rama kore yanta siti yanta. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He has done great things. For he has done great things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What I have in God is far greater than what I don't have in life. Praise God. I have so much in God. I have so much in God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Just give you a moment or two before we ask the ushers to come and pass out the envelopes. And You know, something needs to happen here today. I know some people have to leave a little early, so we're going to lock the door so you can. It's very, very, very important that we realize that every individual or, and or family has a card. That everybody does something. Maybe, as I said, you've never done it before, but you can start out with a week's salary. You can start out with a month's salary. Some of you are far, 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 far beyond that because you've seen the power of the, the first fruits work. Let me say something just before we pass out those envelopes. You can't buy anything from God. All of this is because of the grace of God. And the only way we can receive anything that's by the grace of God is by faith. It requires our action along with our faith to bring what God pours out to us in grace be manifested. This is all by the grace of Almighty God. The miracles, the manifestations, all that are going to take place. Hallelujah. Ushers, would you be so kind as to pass out the offering envelopes? Offering cards, excuse me. Maybe I can have a card myself.
Now, there's a place on the card for your personal commitment. In other words, what you are committing today towards first fruits. So it shows you for today's portion and then the balance that's due. If you have a business, there's a place for first fruits total commitment of your business. Today's portion and balance due. And a place for your name and your home and your business address and your business phone. In both of those cases, we're, we're working from today uh, until Easter Sunday. Uh, on Easter Sunday for everything to come in by that, if, if God willing, everything to come in by that particular uh, period of time. I think Pastor Bob mentioned something that is well worth repeating this morning. Is if it, Whenever you are involved in a business adventure and you're going to step out to do something more in that business, one of the wisest things you can do is you can plan a first fruits offering towards the success of that part of the business or towards the success of that business taking off. That's a very, very powerful statement. It's a very, very important statement uh, for, for you and for the kingdom as well. Gosh, you've been good staying. and You're very patient. Thank you so much. Now what we're going to do in the moment in a moment is we're going to have Pastor and his wife come forward and we're going to pray for them. Then we're going to have some of the leaders that he designates to come forward. We'll pray for them and then they will be able to pray for you. Now there's no real urgency. It's it's uh, it's hardly even late. There's no urgency to get out of here. Let me encourage you uh, tonight. There's so many times that when we deal with the Word of God, there's a promise of God that's available, but there's also something that's very much required on our part. Uh, I'm going to deal with anywhere from three to five things that are necessary on our part to see the blessing of God manifested in our, in our lives. These are key things that are vital to our growth as Christians. So I remind you tonight at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, Pastor? 6.30. 6.30? Six thirty, okay. We could have Pastor and Joy come and just pray for them. John, why don't you come and join me, honey? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You would uh, do me a favor if you would just. Uh, let me have a sentimental moment uh, with, with Bob and Joy. Um, no, no one really appreciates the value of friends in the ministry. If it had not been for Brother Nichols and Joy Nichols, our minister, ministry would have gone down the tube years ago. Through all kinds of struggles, Bob and Joy helped us walk with us. I, I could tell you some things that were really amazing. We had we had a, an organization called the Is it Faith? What is the Faith organization called now? Fellowship of Faith Churches and whatever. And uh, I ended up becoming the Canadian representative more by accident than by choice, but I became the representative. And I was to speak down at a big, uh, uh, the big conference we were having at Rama. Some of the afternoon sp speakers spoke over late, which was cutting into the time I had. And then after after I spoke, there was dinner, and then Brother Hagen was spoken. So these guys went overboard, and they went long, and everybody knew there was a short period of time to give dinner, and then there would be Brother Hagen. So it's amazing when you stand up on a platform. I don't know what there would have been there, maybe 1,500 people or more on the, not, not the greater numbers. Maybe there could have been 3,000 for all I know. But only half of them got up and left when I stood at the platform to speak. <laughs> but I looked down. So I heard was our good friends. Bob and Joy. Faithful to stand with us when we needed encouragement. 
helpful and faithful in so many things. We're so blessed. Jesus. So, Father God, we now speak your blessing upon them. We thank you for supernatural abundance to come into their life with them yes, because they've given their first fruits, but the full harvest is protected for them. Yes, Lord. We thank you, yes. Father God, for abundance and anointing beyond their greatest belief yes. possible. We thank you for a powerful 2014, Father God, just full of your, your growth thank abundance. You, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pastor, then who did you want with? Uh, if all the staff could come up, please, and I'll pray for them quickly. And I will need some buckets up at the front as well. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, 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 Father. 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 Thank you